welcome everybody to our first virtual lab. This is going to be dealing with some electrochemical cells and reduction potentials. And first of all, let's take a look at what constitutes an electrochemical cell. Uh, this is a beaker containing some zinc 2 plus solution and a piece of zinc metal on one side. And then on the other side, we have a beaker containing some copper 2 plus solution and copper metal on the other side. Uh, th this is the fundamental of an electrochemical cell, a, an element and its ion on one side, an element, a different element, and its ion on the other side, connected by uh, a salt bridge here that's going to allow a complete circuit. And then when we connect one half cell to the other half cell um, through a wire or some other method, then we can have electrons flow from whichever substance most easily loses electrons to whichever substance more easily gains electrons. That makes an electrochemical cell, uh, and the flow of electrons could maybe uh, run a light or start a, a, a function as a battery, start a motor. Uh, in this case, we're simply going to measure a voltage. So let's turn on our voltmeter, and we're going to measure voltage. Uh, we have a common that here is represented by black uh, wire, and we're going to put that on the piece of zinc metal. And then we have a sensing electrode. Here it's going to measure voltage. This is represented by the red wire, and we are going to connect that to the piece of copper metal. And you may notice when that happened, we get a voltage of about 1.05 volts and that is the potential or the voltage of this electrochemical cell. Now, what we're gonna do, we could do this of course with beakers and large amounts of solution and big pieces of metal, but we're gonna shrink this down to a much smaller scale and do microvoltaic cells. So let's move this apparatus over here and show you how we're gonna do our microvoltaic cell. So for our microvoltaic cell, we have a piece of filter paper that has already been cut into a rectangle. And that filter paper is absorbent. And so we're gonna use this actually as both beakers uh, all in one place. So on one side of the filter paper, we're gonna do zinc, and we're actually going to put a couple drops of zinc 2 plus solution on the filter paper. Notice it's absorbed by the filter paper. So that is our zinc 2 plus solution. And then we're gonna take a piece of zinc metal, which has been cleaned off nicely with some steel wool, and we're gonna put that on top of it. So this is our zinc metal uh, in the zinc solution. Now on the other side, we have some copper 2 plus solution. And same idea with a piece of copper metal that has been previously cleaned. That is our copper two plus solution and copper metal beaker. Now the salt bridge is going to be some potassium nitrate solution. So we'll put a little bit of that in between to make sure that the solutions all are in contact with each other. And then we'll get a voltmeter, turn it to volts. And as before, we will connect the black electrode to the zinc and the red electrode to the copper. And we get about 1.01 volts this time, uh, 1.02. So the voltage is pretty darn close to the same. It varies a little bit depending upon how good a contact we can get. Um, and that is the potential of this cell. I'm getting a glare here. There we go. Okay, okay 1.02 volts. And the black electrode is the reference electrode. The red electrode is the sensing electrode. So relative to the black electrode, the zinc, what we can say now is the copper has a potential of 1.02 volts higher than the zinc. And now, of course, we should be able to switch this using the black as the sensing, uh, sorry, as the reference electrode, put that on copper, and now the red on the zinc, and notice you get negative 1.02 volts 
which means relative to the black reference electrode on copper, the zinc is 1.02 volts lower in reduction potential. Okay, now there's going to be some questions for you to answer based upon this, but this is the essential premise of part one. Um, maybe I'll mention a couple things as well. The, uh, this is an electrochemical cell, so electrons flow from the more easily oxidized substance to the more easily reduced substance. The more easily reduced substance is the one that has the higher reduction potential. And uh, let's see, what else do we need to mention? Oh, and in an electrochemical cell, the anode is defined as the place where oxidation occurs, and the cathode is de defined as the place where reduction occurs. So the zinc and the copper are going to be the anode and the cathode. You're gonna to have to figure out which is which, but the anode is where oxidation occurs, the cathode is the electrode at which reduction occurs. End of part one. Okay, uh, now we're ready for the second part, which is going to be a veritable multitude of microvoltaic cells. So we're gonna use the same procedure as before. Filter paper is going to be our beakers, and we're gonna cut this into a seven-pointed star. And each one of these arms of the star is going to be a beaker where there will be, in this case, some copper two plus solution and copper metal. And then we have silver, aluminum, unknown metal M1, unknown metal M2, unknown metal M3, and unknown metal M4. And from our uh, measurements, you're going to be able to uh, not only get reduction potential ordering, but you're going to be able to have information that allows you to potentially identify what metals M1 through 4 might be. So, let's do this. Potentially, pardon the pun. Ha ha ha, okay. So here's our um, filter paper. And, oh, just quick note, all of the metals have been cleaned nicely with uh, uh, steel wool to make a shiny surface and then kind of rinsed off and dried. So, first of all, some copper two plus solution and a piece of copper on this arm. Next is some silver solution. A, this is AG+, plus. the solution is silver nitrate, but the ion is AG+, plus. and then a piece of silver metal on that. Uh, next one is aluminum chloride solution. The ion is AlCl3, or sorry, Al3+. Plus. So there's some aluminum, and here is a piece of aluminum metal. And now unknown metal M1, uh, quick note, all of the M metals that are unknowns are going to have a plus two charged ion. So this is one molar M1, two plus ion solution, so M1, two plus, and metal M1, metal M2, also two plus charge for the ion. M2 and metal M2. Notice that we have distinct shapes for each one to keep them straight because they're all kind of silvery gray metals, hard to tell apart otherwise. This is M3, a two plus ion, so some M3. M3 in contact with it. And last, metal M4, two plus, and a few drops of that and the metal M4, M4, and then we will do some potassium nitrate in the middle to make sure we have contact uh, between all of our arms. Okay, now we've got our voltmeter on, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna do all of our measurements with copper, which is easily, easily identifiable, as our reference electrode. So the black electrode is always going to be on copper. And then we will get a reading for each of the other metals. So here's the one with silver. And we're 
we're getting about 0.16 volts. Okay, now we're gonna go copper as the reference and aluminum. Uh, about 0 0.80 volts. Negative. Oh, sorry, let's get that back. Yes, thank you. Negative 0 0.80 volts. Now copper with M1. Negative 0.63 volts. Copper with metal M2. Negative 1.00 volts. Copper with metal M3. Negative 0.41 volts. Oops, <laughs> metal M3 is a little bit soft. Uh, probe actually stuck in it. And then metal M4 negative 0.43 volts. Okay, so those are the measurements that you're going to need for this part, and that um, is going to be a pause here. Actually, let's kind of scroll to the instructions. Uh, so here we have some tables. You're going to record. We always had the negative electrode on the copper. The positive electrode was on silver, then aluminum, then M1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And we're going to do the measured potential. It's always relative to the copper. So if there was a negative sign or a positive sign, make sure to record that here. And then you're going to put these uh, in order from at the top of this table, the most easily reduced, to at the bottom of the table, the least easily reduced. So you'll put the metal in this column, the reduction half reaction, notice these are all reduction half reactions, and they're gonna be the highest, uh, most easily reduced one at the top, all the way down, and then the measured uh, potential relative to the copper, these are gonna be the same values as in the table here. Okay, so this is gonna be your reduction potential table. And you need to remember that copper is on here. So copper is going to be somewhere in the list. And the reduction is going to be the copper 2 plus ion gaining electrons. Copper or reductions always gain of electrons to make copper solid. So that's your reduction half reaction. And then the potential of copper relative to itself will be zero. We didn't measure that one, but copper relative to itself has a potential of zero. So this is going to be the reduction potential relative to Cu. And then let's just suppose that we had a metal X that had a plus two charged ion, and we measured a potential relative to copper of that of, I'll just make up a number, plus 0.65 volts. Since this is positive, it's higher in potential than the copper by 0.65 volts, so it goes, go, goes above it in the reduction potential. And then the half reaction would be X2 plus, plus two electrons, makes X solid. And the potential relative to copper is 0.65 volts. Now, if we had a substance Y that had a negative voltage reading relative to copper, it would be lower. Let's just say this one hypothetically has a plus three charge. Then that would be that, L, that ion plus three charge gains three electrons to make Y solid. And I'll make up a number. Let's say this was minus 1.38 volts. That would mean this is 1.38, this element Y is 1.38 volts lower in reduction potential than copper. And so this is the thing we're doing to get the ordering. Our reference is copper. In this case, metal X is higher, metal Y is lower. And this is the order of increasing reduction potential 
and the lower reduction potentials are at the bottom. Okay, now there's one other thing that needs to be mentioned here, and that is in this experiment, we actually used copper as our reference, and that was therefore our zero of potential, and substance X was 0.65 volts higher than that, substance Y was 1.38 volts lower than that, um, and copper was our zero. But in reality, we only used copper as our zero because that was convenient for us because we could easily identify copper and because the standard reference, the standard zero, which is hydrogen, is um, not something we could physically do very easily here. So it's worth noting that relative to hydrogen, the reduction potential of copper is actually 0.34 volts. So relative to hydrogen, copper should be 0.34 volts. Now, element X is, of course, still 0.65 volts higher than that. So if we want its actual reduction potential on the scale we normally use relative to, uh, relative to hydrogen, then since this is 0.65 volts higher than 0.34, we actually have to add 0.34 volts to get the reduction potential relative to hydrogen. So this would then be 0.99 volts. And that, of course, is true for any of the elements. Y is 1.38 volts lower than copper. So on the scale where hydrogen is the zero, we would actually want to add 0.34 volts to this to make it on the appropriate scale. And so this would then be negative 1.04 volts. So do note that's another column you're going to have to add to your reduction potentials order. Make sure copper's on it. Make sure they're all written as reductions. Make sure the highest reduction potential, the most positive number, is at the top. And then down to the most negative number at the bottom. All right, now uh, this needs perhaps a little bit of explanation to make sure you know what you're uh, doing because we're asking you to do a prediction and then measure and see how closely you come to the prediction. So the prediction is going to be, uh, let's say the first one here, AG with M1. So let's go over to the seven-armed star. And what we want you to predict is now uh, since that said AG with M1, the first one listed is AG, so we'll put the reference electrode on AG. And then M1 is the next one listed, and we'll put the sensing electrode on M1. And we're asking you to predict what that voltage reading should be. And then if we go to, let's go down a bit to maybe M1 with M2, then what we would be doing is putting the black electrode on M1 and the sensing electrode on M2. And we want you to predict what that voltage reading should be. Um, and in this case, give your reasoning as well. So let's see how this works in practice. So if we were going to now be predicting for, let's say, Cu x, what we would say is we look at Cu, we look at X, and we expect that X is going to be 0.65 volts higher than Cu. And since Cu was listed first, that's where we're going to put the black electrode. Since X was net listed next, that's where we put the red electrode. And we would expect to get a positive reading, therefore. So the prediction for this one would be some 0.65 volts. Okay, now let's try another one that's maybe a little less straightforward. What if we do X and Y, and let's do them in that order. So we want the prediction for X with Y. So we're gonna put the black electrode on X and the red electrode on Y. So relative to X, we're going to expect to be the 6.65 volts above zero 
relative to copper, and then also the 1.38 volts below zero relative to copper. So that's a total difference between these two of 0.65 minus a negative 1.38 or 0.65 plus 1.38 volts, which works out to be, what, 2.03. And notice that X was our reference electrode, Y was our sensing electrode, so this is lower, and so we would expect this to be a negative value because of how we're doing the ordering. Okay, so now we'll do the measurements. Um, please do note, you need to make your predictions ahead of time, or at least it's better if you do that, and make sure that you show your setup, kind of like we did on the board there, that you show this minus this, or this plus that, how you do the calculation, and with the appropriate signs. And when the measurements are actually compared to your predictions, they should be close or close-ish, but they won't necessarily be exact because this has been sitting here for a while, things dry out a little bit, and we may not get exactly the same kind of contact, but we're ready to go. Okay, so the first one is AG with M1, and this time I will not block out the voltmeter so you can actually see what kind of voltages we get. So black on AG, red on M1, And we'll let you do the reading yourself. I won't say it out loud. Just making sure there's no glare. Okay. Got it. So the next one is AG with M2. Black on AG, M2. And there's your reading. AG with M3 is that value. AG with M4, oh, M3 stuck again. That might give you a clue to its identity. Shh, don't tell anybody. AG with M4. And AG with AL. And now M1 with M2. There's M1, there's M2. M2 with M3, M2 with M3. And M3 with M4, there's M3, and there is M4, whoops, sliding a bit. And that's M3 with M4. Okay, and I think that is it. I uh, hope you were able to make sense of the lab while we did it virtually. Sorry you didn't get a chance to cut filter paper and put drops of solution onto the filter paper and pieces of metal with it and do the measurements yourself, but hopefully you can still develop some understanding uh, of what's going on from the measurements that we made. So good luck, have fun. See you later.